Hey boys and girls, welcome back to Telling Tales with Mrs. Taylor. And you know, I wanted to ask you something. You know the animals that are behind me? Have you ever noticed that they seem to keep moving around? I swear that Hedwig was over there one time. The cat in the hat keeps moving around. I thought he was up here somewhere and my little cat in the hat puppet has moved. So have you noticed that over these last few months? Hmm, well keep watching because who knows where they're gonna be next week. The first book I'm gonna to read to you from our top 50 is by Jan Brett and it's called The Mitten. It's kind of gonna be a hard one to see because it's one of those um, board books. Okay. Once there was a boy named Nicky. He wanted mittens as white as snow. I figured I'd keep reading. I'd read it because it's still snowing. If you drop a white mitten in the snow, it's going to be hard to find, his grandma told him. But Nicky wanted snow white mittens so much that his baba, which is grandma, made them for him. When she finished knitting, Nikki put on the mittens and went out to play. It wasn't long before one of his mittens fell off. A little mole found it and crawled inside and it was just the right size. So he decided to stay. Usually you can look at the picture over here. Okay. A rabbit came hopping by, and he wiggled in next to the mole. A hedgehog wanted to get warm, so the mole and the rabbit even made room for him inside the mitten. Boy, that mitten's getting kind of tight and full of animals. The owl didn't want to be left out, so the mole, the rabbit, and the hedgehog had to move over. The little mitten was really getting crowded. A badger looked out of his house, and he saw the mitten. He climbed right in. It started to snow. So a fox pushed his way in and made himself right at home. Whoa, that's one stretchy mitten. Then a big bear sniffed at the mitten. The animals were packed in tight, but the bear didn't care. He crawled in anyway. The mitten was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Then a tiny mouse squeezed in and perched herself on the big bear's nose. It's hard for you to see, but there's where the little mouse is. The mouse's whiskers tickled the bear's nose. Uh, uh, I can chew! The bear sneezed and all the mittens, or excuse me, all the animals flew out of the mitten. Nikki saw his mitten sail up into the air. It's right here. From the window, Baba watched Nikki catch his mitten. See, Baba, he called. I have both my mittens. And Baba smiled. <laughs> but look how big the one mitten was stretched out. She might have to make him another one, right? Maybe a different color. Okay, that's a cute one. I love Jan Brett books. I'm sure you've read some or seen some. They're very, very colorful. Okay. 
How many of you ever heard people say, well, I'm putting that in my bucket list. That's for my bucket list. You've heard that? It kind of means like, like Mr. Taylor and I, we always like to go p visit different places. So on our bucket list, we're going to put in Salem, Massachusetts. That's a place that we want to visit. Well, this one is for kids. How full is your bucket written by, let's see, last name is Rath. So we'll see what's happening. Now, you don't really put it in a real bucket, although I suppose you could. You could have a bucket sitting at your house and things that you want to do. You could write it down and put it in that bucket. And after you've done it, you can take it out and say, "I well, I've crossed that off my bucket list. So how full is your bucket? Felix was putting one of the last blocks on his tower when his little sister came in. I want to build with you. But Felix scowled, go away, you're too little. I'm big, stay back or you're gonna knock it over. I can be careful, go play with your baby toys, Anna. And thwack, look what Anna did. Boy. Grandpa! Grandpa shook his head. Felix, you just dipped from your sister's bucket. Like everyone else, Anna has an invisible bucket. And when it's empty, she feels bad. But when it's full, she feels great. Didn't you ever notice that you have your own bucket? Invisible bucket? Hmm. Sometimes Felix couldn't quite tell when his grandpa was joking or not. But the next morning when Felix woke up, there it was, a small gray bucket floating above his head. This is a little different kind of bucket list. When Felix came down to have breakfast, his mother was in a hurry. I've got a meeting this morning and it's almost time to go. Anna, sit still while I comb your hair. Morning sometimes at home can be chaos. Uh-oh, Felix slipped and cocoa wheat scattered across the floor. Felix, yelled his mom, you should have used the stool to reach that. Now Felix could feel his, could feel his bucket tip and big invisible drips fell out. Drip, drip, ha ha. Anna laughed as she crunched the cereal with her shoe drip. Get the broom and clean that up before you miss the bus, scolded Mom. With the school bus honking, Felix quickly swept up the chocolate wheats, grabbed the last blueberry muffin. But before he could even take one bite, what's going to happen? Buster, his dog, jumped up and grabbed the muffin from his hand. Drip. Hey, look at Felix's new backpack. My baby brother has one just like it. Ha ha. Drip, drip, drip. Every time something sad or bad happens, his, em his bucket is emptying. Hey, watch out, shrimp, said a big kid at school. Drip. His bucket's getting emptier. It was still morning, and Felix's bucket felt almost empty. I think he's kind of getting in a bad mood. As he watched his classmates walk into the room, he secretly hoped they would trip and fall. That's what it feels like when you have an empty bucket. Felix slumped into his seat and waited for something else bad to happen. Mrs. Bumblenickel walked slowly up to his desk and handed him a paper. 
he could barely, barely look at it. Felix, you wrote a wonderful story. Would you please share it with the class? Felix grinned, and instead of a drip, he felt a drop fall in his bucket. Drop, plop, plink, drop. And its story was called The Gigantosaurus Who Wanted a Pet by Felix. The class grew quiet. They laughed at all the right places and ooed at the scary parts. When Felix finally read the end, all his classmates clapped. Even Emily, who sat next to him and didn't usually like dinosaurs. Now, Felix felt a whole shower of drops land in his bucket. Maybe this day wouldn't be so bad after all. Drop. Team captains today are Veronica and Felix. Drop. Nice cow, said his arts teacher. It's a dog. Well, nice colors there, Felix. Cool laser ant backpack, Felix. Drop, drop. His bucket's filling up. He's feeling better. By afternoon, Felix's bucket was nearly full. At recess, when he looked around, Felix suddenly realized that his grandpa was right. He noticed that everyone else had a bucket, too. Drop, drop. Let me help you. Drop, drop. Here, your, here's your baseball catch. Drop, drop. Thanks, dude. Drop, drop. Hi, I'm Felix. Is this your first day of school? Yes. I'm Amir. Now, Amir's bucket hardly has any water in it because he's a brand new student. So his bucket isn't full. He's a little scared. So when Felix said hi to him, he got a drop. The strange thing was that for every drop he helped put in someone else's bucket, he felt another drop in his own bucket. When Felix burst in the door after school, he shouted, Grandpa, you were right. I do have a bucket, and I understand how it works. Then he saw Anna's torn doll. Bad dog, he almost scolded. But then he thought, you know, dogs might have invisible buckets too. Your doll will be okay, Anna, said Felix. Mom will fix her. But until then, do you want to help me build the tallest building in the world with my blocks? And so they did. And their buckets were quite full, but almost. So how full is your bucket today? See you next week. Bye-bye.